Hello students, welcome to the lecture on accounting for partnership firms, fundamentals and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe partnership and types of partnership. Explain partnership deed and its role in partnership accounting. Explain distribution of profit among partners. Describe goodwill and factors giving rise to goodwill and explain methods of valuation. Fundamentals. Let us begin by understanding partnership. A partnership is a legal association of two or more individuals called partners and who are co-owners of a business for profit. Like proprietorships, they are easy to form. This type of business organization is based upon a written agreement that details the various interests and right of the partners and it is advisable to get legal advice and document each person's rights and responsibilities. Kinds of partnerships. There are three main kinds of partnerships. General partnership, a business that is owned and operated by two or more persons where each individual has a right as a co-owner and is liable for the business's debts. Limited partnership, in a limited partnership, one or more partners run the business as general partners and the remaining partners are passive investors who become limited partners and are personally liable only for the amount of their investments. Master Limited Partnership These partnerships are similar to corporations trading partnership units on listed stock exchanges. They have many advantages that are similar to corporations. Example, limited liability, unlimited life and transferable ownership. Master Limited Partnerships are a type of limited partnership that is publicly traded. There are two types of partners in this type of partnership. The limited partner is the person or a group that provides the capital to the master limit partnership and receives periodic income distributions from the master limit partnership's cash flow, whereas the general partner is the party responsible for managing the master limit partnership's affairs and receives compensation that is linked to the performance of the venture. One of the most crucial criteria that must be met in order for a partnership to be legally classified as a master limit partnerships is that the partnership must derive most of its cash flows from real estate, natural resources and commodities. The advantage of a master limit partnerships is that it combines the tax benefits of a limited partnership with the liquidity of a publicly traded company. Features of partnership. Let us study the features of partnership. There must be at least two persons to form a valid partnership. Section 11 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932 restrict the maximum number of partners to 10 for carrying on banking business and 20 for other kind of business. Partnership comes into existence by an agreement, either written or oral, among the partners. The written agreement among the partners is called partnership deed. A partnership can be formed for the purpose of carrying and sharing the profits or losses of the business. An agreement between the partners must be aimed at sharing the profits or losses of the business. A partnership can be carried on by all or any one of them acting for all. Partnership deed. A partnership is always formed by an agreement between the partners. This may be oral or written. When the agreement is written, duly stamped and signed by the partners, it is called the partnership deed or article of partnership. Contents of partnership deed are name of the firm, names, qualifications, occupations and addresses of partners, the nature of business of firm, duration of the partnership, the capital contribution of each partner. Role of partnership deed in accounting. Let us study the role of partnership deed in accounting. Every aspect relating to the partnership may be included in the partnership deed. This deed forms the basis of any transaction involving the partners. Even accounting for partnership firms is a function that is to be carried on in accordance with the provisions in the partnership deed. Salary to be paid to partners, profits to be shared among partners, Interest on capital, interest on drawings, etc. are all to be decided based on the agreement between the partners, that is, based on the partnership deed. 
Thus, in accounting for transactions involving these, compliance with what is agreed upon should be ensured. In the case, partnership deed or the agreement between the partners is silent on any aspect that is to be decided based on that agreement, the provisions in the Indian Partnership Act 1932 applies. Role of Partnership Act in the absence of partnership deed The Partnership Act is very important in the absence of partnership deed because IN will decide the profit sharing ratio between the partners. It will provide the partners their rights and solve many other issues among the partners and their clients. Special Aspects of Partnership Accounts A capital account reflects for stake in the partnership. The exact behavior of a capital account will vary depending on the form of partnership selected. This reflects how a capital account will behave in a general partnership with no special allocation provisions. A capital account starts with the beginning balance that partners have in capital account. Then any contributions he adds will be added to that total, thus increasing the value of capital account. It is very important to maintain these accounts accurately. This is extremely important when dissolving the partnership as any remaining property is distributed according to these balances. Partner liability can also be determined along these lines assuming everyone has the ability to pay. There are two methods by which the capital accounts of partners can be maintained. These are fixed capital method and fluctuating capital method. The difference between the two lies in whether or not the transactions other than addition, withdrawal of capital are recorded in the capital accounts of the partners. Fixed capital account of partners. This is one of the ways of keeping partners contribution that is capital in the books of the firm. The main aim of maintaining fixed capital accounts of partners is to show the amount of original contribution of partners throughout whole year on a constant figure. Under this method, capital accounts are maintained, one of which shows the original capital of the partners without any change throughout the year and another account is open to record the transactions between the partners and the firm, that is salary to partners, commission to partners, bonus to partners, interest on capital and drawings made by the partners and so as like in the partner's current account. The capital account of partners showing the original capital could be changed when there is a change in the constitution or when a partner draws money from the business against her or his capital. And the other way of maintaining accounts is fluctuating capital account of partners. In fluctuating capital account of keeping partners, capital account only one capital account of partners is opened. This account will record not only the original capital contribution, but also the transaction between the partners and the firm. It includes partners' drawings, commission and interest on capital, bonus and salary to partners and so on as the case may be. This account is fluctuating whenever there is a presence of any transaction influencing the concerned account. Whenever there is a system of fluctuating capital account, no maximum limit can be put on the partner's drawings as is maintained in the fixed capital account system. Fixed capital is an assets or capital investments that are needed to start up and conduct business, even at a minimal stage. These assets are considered fixed in that they are not used up in the actual production of a good or service, but have a reusable value. Fixed capital investments are typically depreciated on the company's accounting statements over a long period of time, up to 20 years or more. Examples include factories, office buildings, computer servers, insurance policies, legal contracts and manufacturing equipment, anything that is not continually purchased in the course of production of a good or service. The amount of fixed capital needed to set up a business is quite variable, especially from industry to industry. Some lines of business, by their nature, require high fixed capital investment. Common examples would include industrial manufacturers, telecommunications providers and oil exploration firms, 
Fixed capital investments typically don't depreciate in the even way that is shown on income statements. Some devalue quite quickly, while others have nearly infinite usable lives. But the depreciation method allows investors to see a rough estimate of how much value fixed capital investments are contributing to the current performance of the company. Distribution of profits among partners. A profit and loss appropriation account is prepared to show the distribution of profits among partners as per the provision of partnership deed. It is an extension of profit and loss account. It is nominal account. A profit and loss appropriation account is the account in which one shows the distribution of profit among partners of partnership firm in the form of salary, interest on capital, commission and distributable profit to the partner. Profit and loss appropriation account is merely an extension of the profit and loss account of the firm. Contents of profit and loss appropriation account Interest on capital It is the expenses for the partnership. Interest on capital is allowed only if there is a profit. Partnership agreement specifically provides for the payment of the interest on the capital contributed by the partners. The same has to be allowed. Interest to be allowed on capital is to be calculated with respect to the time, rate and amount. Interest on drawing The partnership agreement may also provide for charging of interest on money withdrawn out of the firm by the partners for their personal use. No interest is charged on the drawings if there is no express agreement among the partners about it. However, if the partnership deed so provides for it, the interest is charged at an agreed rate for the period money remained outstanding from the partners during an accounting year. Charging interest on drawings discourages excessive amounts of drawings by the partners. Credit made clearer. Understanding interest and APR. When you use your credit card, charges like interest are normally added to the amount you've borrowed. Just like that. <laughs> And although most providers will wait up to 56 days before charging you interest on purchases, the interest rate is different depending on how you use your card. Exactly. And that interest is often higher and charged immediately. Together, the interest, fees and what you spent add up to the total amount you'll have to pay back. And the way it's calculated is a real science. But because we're not all rocket scientists like this chap, Credit card providers wrap up all those difficult numbers and sums into a handy thing called the APR. The APR makes it easy to compare different cards before deciding which one is best for you. It's based on the purchase interest rate and includes things like annual fees, although cash withdrawal charges and default fees are not included. If you think you might have trouble making any repayments, click the default fees button or have a look at more information on interest and APR on our website. Guarantee of profit to a partner. Guarantee is an assurance that a partner will not get as his share of profit less than the guaranteed amount. There may be two situations. Guarantee to one partner by others, the firm. Sometimes a partner is guaranteed a minimum amount by way of his share in the profits of the firm. Such a guarantee may be given to an existing partner or to a new partner at the time of admission. Such guaranteed amount shall be paid to partner when his share of profit, as calculated, according to his profit sharing ratio, is less than the guaranteed amount. The deficiency of such guaranteed amount will be borne by the other partners in their profit sharing or agreed ratio as the case may be. Guarantee to a partner by another partner individually. The guarantee to an existing or incoming partner may be given by all the old partners or any of them in their new profit sharing ratio or an agreed guarantee. Past adjustments. Sometimes after the final accounts have been prepared and the partner's capital account are closed, it is found that certain items have been omitted by mistake or have been wrongly treated. Such omissions and commissions usually relate to the interest on capital, interest on drawings, salary to partners, etc. In such a situation, necessary adjustments have to be made in the partner's capital account 
through an account called profit and loss adjustment account. The adjustment can also be made directly in the partner's capital accounts without preparing a profit and loss adjustment account. In such a situation, one can prepare a statement to find out the net effect of omissions and commissions and then to debit the capital account of the partner who had been credited in excess and credit the capital account of the partner who had been debited in excess. Sometimes after closing the accounts, it is discovered that there were errors or omissions in the accounts. Goodwill Goodwill is an accounting concept meaning the value of an asset owned that is intangible but has a quantifiable prudent value in a business. For example, a reputation the firm enjoyed with its clients. Goodwill is also one of the special aspects of partnership accounts which require adjustment at the time of a change in the profit sharing ratio, the admission of a partner or the retirement or death of a partner. Over a period of time, a well-established business develops an advantage of good name, reputation and wide business connections. This helps the business to earn more profits as compared to a newly set up business. In accounting, the monetary value of such advantage is known as goodwill. It is regarded as an intangible asset. In other words, goodwill is the value of the reputation of a firm in respect of the profits expected in future over and above the normal profits. It is generally observed that when a person pays for goodwill, he, she pays for something which places him in the position of being able to earn super profits as compared to the profit earned by other firms in the same industry. In simple words, goodwill can be defined as the present value of a firm's anticipated excess earnings or as the capitalized value attached to the differential profit capacity of a business. Thus, goodwill exists only when the firm earns super profits. Any firm that earns normal profits or is incurring losses has no goodwill. Types of goodwill The goodwill is generally of two types, that is, purchased goodwill or non-purchased raised goodwill. Purchased goodwill arises only when a business enterprise is acquired by another business enterprise and the price paid is more than the net assets required. Such goodwill is recognized by the accounting profession and is also shown in the balance sheet. The main features of such goodwill are It arises only on purchase of business. It is reflected by a purchase transaction. Non-purchased or raised goodwill arises only when a business generates its own goodwill over a period of time due to various factors such as location, good management, good quality products, etc. The main features of such goodwill are it is internally generated, no cost can be placed on it, factors giving rise to goodwill, nature of business, location, efficiency of management, market situation, special advantages. Summary now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. A partnership is a legal association of two or more individuals called partners and who are co-owners of a business for profit. Types of partnerships are general partnership, limited partnership, master limited partnership. Contents of partnership deed, name of the firm, names, qualifications, occupations and addresses of partners. The nature of business of firm, duration of the partnership, the capital contribution of each partner. A profit and loss appropriation. Account is prepared to show the distribution of profits among partners as per the provision of partnership deed. Goodwill is an accounting concept meaning the value of an asset owned that is intangible but has a quantifiable prudent value in a business. For example, a repetition the firm enjoyed with its clients. The goodwill is generally of two types, that is, purchased goodwill or non-purchased raised goodwill. Factors giving rise to goodwill are nature of business, location, efficiency of management, market situation, special advantages.